the RTX 2070 Ti is already a tough sell as it is. That doesn't mean that companies like MSI aren't trying their best to make it a good deal regardless. Or at least as much as they can, you know? And that is where the MSI RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio comes in, which is a pretty good looking, and not to mention, feature packed RTX 4070 Ti, which even though it commits quite a few cardinal sins, should still be considered if you're looking into getting a 4070 Ti. Now let's get the basics out of the way first. It looks so good. And yes, even though the black and silver theme may not match everyone's PCs, it's still good enough that it will match most. Not to mention the fact that it has some rather tasteful and not over the top RGB effects that of course can always be turned off if they buffer you too much. Now it does also include a special anti-GPU sag support, but I don't know what's going on, I just couldn't get this thing actually working properly because I would have no idea how to install it and even once I did watch a video on how to do it, my one would just kind of stick out like this and wouldn't actually give the graphics card any support. Now I don't know if I'm just dumb or if I was shipped a defective one or if the system is just poorly designed, but seeing how I don't embarrass myself on the internet, I'll just say it's probably one of the latter two options there. The other key accessory is of course the 2.8 pin to Nvidia's 16 pin adapter because of course this card does require a 16 pin to run. So. Uh, you better be sure you've, you know, inserted it all the way, or you're gonna have some fireworks going on your PC. Either way, once you do get it running, I mean, it's the 4070 Ti. What do you expect? It's pretty good. In pretty much all the games we threw at it, it has performed extremely well, no matter the genre. And of course, this is all running at 4K, because, let's be honest, you aren't buying this graphics card for anything else. Okay, okay, before people get too mad at me in the comments, yes, I know some people are gonna buy it for 1440p as well, and for that, it is still very, very good. But of course, it can be made even better, either through manually overclocking it, or through using MSI software. And yeah, let's talk about MSI software. Firstly, figuring out whether you need to get the MSI Center or the MSI Dragon Center app is already confusing enough. And then also for some reason, the MSI Afterburner software, which is pretty much the gold standard for overclocking, is its own separate thing, which you have to also install on top of MSI Center. Then once you get MSI Center, trying to figure out what modules you need to get is also confusing enough. And when you try to install some of them, for example, Mystic Light, it might just fail outright. And at the end of all that, when the software isn't bugging out, or nagging you to install Norton Security for whatever reason, it is basically just okay. The Mystic Light module gives you a lot of options for controlling the RGB with a lot of rather creative patterns. But let's be honest, you don't care about that. You just want to know how to squeeze every last frame out of this GPU. And MSI does technically have a module in MSI Center for that, in which you can choose between extreme, balanced, and silent options, on top of a custom option which doesn't really allow you to change much. And honestly, the extreme setting really doesn't even change much here in terms of performance. But still kind of nice to have, I guess, especially seeing how another feature that this graphics card has is a switch between a gaming and a silent BIOS, but seeing how that's on the graphics card itself, naturally you won't be able to actually use it most of the time. So having a more convenient way of at least somewhat changing that in software is also nice. Though of course, if you do want to manually overclock the graphics card, you have plenty of room for that. The graphics card is huge. Not only is it huge, but it's also heavy, which just means more cooling potential. And the cooling is really doing a good job here, seeing how even in the most demanding tests it's barely past 60 degrees. That combined with the pretty high power budget that the NVIDIA 16-pin connector allows does mean that you can manually overclock this card way beyond what even MSI offers. And of course, you have MSI's own afterburner software on standby to do just that. That. But anyway, now let's talk about more stuff that annoys me. With one of the biggest being the fact that this graphics card only has a single HDMI connector, which I still think is unacceptable in this day and age, even if most people are doing it. Especially seeing how your only option for two HDMI ports this generation is ASUS, and that's it. And before anyone tries to correct me in the comments, Yes, HDMI 2.1 is faster than DisplayPort, get over it. Especially seeing how a few generations ago we could be getting free HDMI and free DisplayPort per graphics card, this is a pretty major downgrade no matter how you put it. 
And yes, I do agree that having 6 video outputs in total might be a bit overkill, but once the bar has been set that high by the industry, anything else is a downgrade, and that is exactly what MSI is doing here. But still, that shouldn't be an issue for most people anyway, and if it isn't an issue for you, then hey, good for you, maybe this graphics card will be worth getting. And it can be all yours for just $880, or $80 more than the MSRP for a Founders Edition 4070 Ti. For the stuff you get, an $80 markup is fairly reasonable. If you can get over some of the stuff like the MSI software being what it is, only having one HDMI port, and of course, the size of the thing. And if you're fine with all of that, then this 4070 Ti will serve you very, very well. So if you want to get it yourself, then the Amazon links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And hey, while you're still here, maybe also check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar month truly goes a long way, while well, you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Aki B, Justin Rage, I love Ronyak, Bodish Welcome, Nick Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Level Up. Down there you can find our merch store, where you can find our limited edition 10 year anniversary merch, and down there's also our Discord server and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.